Hi guys, it is Cara with the Bubble Lush. So today I'm going to be doing a Q&A video, which I love. I love these videos because um, it's not me just sitting here rambling about whatever I want to talk about. I'm answering your questions and so it's great because it gives me an idea of what you are interested in knowing about. And since I haven't really, <laughs> I haven't been very active on YouTube during this pregnancy, um, I thought that this would be a good opportunity to, if you had any random questions, to go ahead and ask them. So what I did was I posted it on um, my Facebook fan page, which is just facebook.com slash bubblelush, or um, I also posted it on Instagram, which is just the bubblelush on Instagram. So I'm just, I have Instagram pulled up here and I'm just going to go through and answer your questions. Um, I will say there are a lot of questions about my birth plan, and since that is like such a big topic, or something that I want to be able to like kind of dedicate some time talking to. I'm not going to answer like the birth plan questions, not because I want to keep it a big secret, but like I said, I want to make like a dedicated birth plan video. So um, all the other questions I will try to answer here. Okay? Okay. Uh, so let's get started. We miss you. Will you continue to foster after number three? I miss family vlogs from you. Um, we are going to continue to foster after number three. I'm probably going to take um, a little bit of a break. Our certifier has actually, um, she's been like really easy on us and she knows that I'm pregnant. And she's like, why don't you guys just spend some time as a family? And so we are technically open. So if they really needed a home, then we would be called. But um, as of right now, we're not being called and uh, for a placement. But we're still technically open, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then afterwards, we'll just kind of play it by ear. Um, why didn't you do pregnancy updates with this baby? I don't really know. Life was really busy. The first, like, four months <laughs> that I knew I was pregnant, um, we were fostering two boys, and they were very... Hmm. It was hard. Four kids is hard. Um, but they also had a lot of emotional challenges, and, uh, I was spread really, really thin, and so I didn't have much to give. I didn't, honestly, I didn't have much to give to YouTube. Um, any, like, sanity I had at the end of the day, I just <laughs> tried to take some time for myself because spending all day raising four kids is, was hard. Um, so the first four months I was either tired from the pregnancy or tired from fostering. And then after they, after the boys transitioned to a family member, um, we really spent time, I mean, just kind of like introverted into our family and um, just kind of reconnected as a family. And I don't know, I've just been busy and it, it hasn't been a priority and I don't really know why. I guess I could probably spend some time meditating and figure out why, but um, I've just been busy. I feel like I'm mom taxi, I'm always on the go. I'm always like taking Hannah to ballet or gymnastics or whatever, and at the end of the day when the kids go to sleep, um, I want to sleep too, because I'm tired. So, I don't know. I hope to make it more of a priority um, going forward, and uh, I'm definitely not like leaving my channel or anything like that. But, I don't know, for some reason this pregnancy was just kind of, just something that like, I just kind of like kept for myself. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, okay. What are your favorite baby related moments that you had this pregnancy? That's a good question. Um, I really enjoyed seeing Hannah get excited <laughs> for this baby because when she found out a boy, it was a boy, she was not very excited. Um, but now literally anytime we go up to like a cashier, she's telling them <laughs> she's gonna have a little baby brother and um she's just very very excited and I think that that seeing her excitement and being a big sister and having her play kind of a role this time around she was really young for William um just like William is really young for this baby he doesn't know what's going on but Hannah does and seeing her excitement has been really fun also another neat moment is um <laughs> sometimes like when the baby kicks or something like late at night uh I look over at my husband and and he just kind of looks and he's still like shocked that we're pregnant, you know, like it's like it hasn't even sunk in yet. We're just like a few weeks away from my due date and he's still just kind of like, I can't believe we're pregnant. Like, I can't believe it just like happened. Um, so seeing that like <laughs> um, kind of amazement on his face has been really kind of neat this pregnancy. Uh, do you have a name picked out? 
we do. We finally kind of settled on a name. We haven't announced it like widely or anything like that. And I probably won't announce it on the internet until his birth. Um, but we do kind of have a name and we're starting to like test it out and I, I love it. So it's good. Have you had any pr uh, cravings this time around? I've loved creamsicles. It is hot. I'm like sweating as I like film this. I like, I'm sweating. <laughs> I have a fan right here, but I turned it off because I know it would be like weird background noise, but I might have to turn it on later in this video because it's hot. Um, so creamsicles have just been like my go-to thing, which is not super healthy. Um, but also protein. I'm always like craving protein when I'm pregnant. It's a big thing. And, and really, really like crushed ice. <laughs> like drinks filled like lemonade. I like love lemonade with um, lots of crushed ice or even blended, like just anything cold. Give me something cold. Uh, how has this pregnancy been different from Hannah and William? Okay. This pregnancy was a complete surprise. <laughs> complete surprise. Um, and I have not had any morning sickness with this pregnancy, which is insane. And in the third trimester, I am getting, this time around, I'm getting like swollen feet. Um, it's not like a preeclampsia issue. I've talked to my midwives about it. I don't have any other symptoms or anything like that. I think it's just the heat. Even though I'm pushing fluids, I'm like getting cankles with this pregnancy and I've never gotten them before. So um, that's not very fun. But I, I, I'll take the trade off. I, if you don't have morning sickness in the first trimester, but you do have cankles in the third, I think that that's a good trade off. So I'm okay with it. Uh, will you be doing more updates on the kids and new baby after he is born? I hope to. I really do. That's a labor and delivery question. Are you planning on having more kids after this one? Are you going to do a day in the life with three kids? Uh, we kind of do want to have another kid after this one because we're crazy, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think we are going to try for a fourth. And um, I'm sure at some point I will do a day in the life with three kids. I did. I filmed kind of like a week in the life with two kids. I just haven't gotten around to editing it. Ugh, oh, it's hot. I am like super sweaty in this room. Okay guys, I tried to film this without having a fan on because I know it kind of does weird things with the, the volume <laughs> and the sound, but I can't do it. It's hot. <laughs> so I turned the fan back on, I apologize. Uh, it's just for the wind blown effect, you know. Okay, what are you doing to prepare to be a family of five? And uh, will you still be fostering? I already answered that one. So, Preparing to be a family of five. Trying to get everything in order. <laughs> like, all the clothes ready. Um, but it's really hard to prepare to be a family of five, honestly. I got all the car seats professionally installed and double checked, and so I know that, that that's safe. And um, I've got his area set up, and I've been just been talking to the kids a lot about kind of what to expect with a baby. Other than that, I don't think there's a lot that you can do. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. We probably should have done more like freezer meals and stuff like that. Um, we'll probably regret <laughs> honestly not doing that. But uh, yeah, that's about it. What are you doing to prepare big sister and big brother? Talking to them a lot about kind of uh, how a baby acts, what his schedule is going to be like so she understands. Trying to come up with, uh, like brainstorming with her ways that she can help and be involved. I keep asking her if she wants to change diapers and she refuses. She's still adamant that she's not gonna change diapers. Darn it. <laughs> but um, she is a really good gopher. And William's is starting to get, be a good gopher too if like you ask him to go get stuff, which is so helpful. I know that's gonna be really helpful when I'm breastfeeding. Like if I need something, they can, they're really good at running and getting it. So that is great. Um, I also, we tried to potty train William so that he would be out of diapers in time for the baby to be born. And that's just not happening. <laughs> you're not having a lot of success. He doesn't mind sitting on the potty. He has no problem doing it, but like he doesn't initiate it. He doesn't like listen to his body or anything like that. Um, so it's not like a fight, but it's, we're just not making a lot of headway. So I tried, I failed. Um, okay. I'm due at the end of August with baby number two and want to know how hard is the transition from one child to two? And how did you get Hannah to understand that new baby needs extra attention? The transition from one to two was tough because you didn't, I, I remember being really scared about how my love could 
like how my love could be divided between two kids because Hannah was just like the center of our universe and how would I ever love another child as much as I love Hannah and it just happens it, it just you just do <laughs> I don't know don't question it I promise it will happen you just do love them just as much it's the weirdest thing um your heart grows I guess and um Hannah had a tough time and it wasn't her fault. William was a really hard baby. He had reflux really bad. He screamed and cried all the time. He was very like high needs. He nursed all the time. He barely slept. Like she had a rough go of it. <laughs> and, and I really feel for her. Um, thankfully she doesn't really remember it. So she's excited about this baby and hopefully this baby does not have reflux and everything like William did because wow that was hard. Um, but I, I think that you just prepare them by just kind of like talking to them or like um by giving Hannah I gave Hannah a baby doll and so like she would practice you know like changing his clothes and putting him down for a nap and you know being quiet and courteous when the baby when the baby doll was napping that kind of thing and so I don't know I guess that they just learn I don't know Chris and I just kind of like laugh and we're like their world is about to get rocked especially Williams Williams world is gonna be rocked and there's just not much you can do to prepare I, I don't think <laughs> you just hope and pray that everyone makes it out alive I guess um, have you had any pregnancy scares or anything abnormal or serious during this pregnancy no Thankfully, nothing. My midwives, every time they see me, they're like, this is the most boring pregnancy ever. And we love it. We love it. But uh, keep doing what you're doing and we'll see you back in three weeks, two weeks, whatever it is. So <laughs> it's been extremely, extremely low key. I think that's another reason why I don't didn't do pregnancy updates is because there's literally nothing to update on. Tummy got a little bigger, gained a pound nothing else happened <laughs> so um all my tests came back great the baby is always measured like right on you know right up where it's supposed to didn't have gestational diabetes i mean everything is just like lining up and perfect and <sighs> it's a really really easy pregnancy so that's amazing and great and knock on wood that that continues are you doing big sister uh big brother gifts Yes, I am. Um, I need to, I keep remember, trying to remember when I go to Target to buy the gift bags for them so that I can pack them up, but they're all like kind of scurried away down in my craft room. And I just need to buy William one more thing and then we'll be good to go. And yes, I can share them either in a blog or an Instagram post or a video or something. I will, I will do that. Um, how have you found the difference between, between the three pregnancies? That, like this third one you've had a toddler plus an older sister um so the one nice thing about all my pregnancies is uh well the first one it was you know there was no, no one else to really worry about like you could come home from work and sleep because there wasn't any kids to take care of and so that pregnancy was pretty easy because i really just took care of myself and pampered myself and got ready for the baby and set up the nursery and you know was just living in this like oh, i'm pregnant bubble and uh, <laughs> with william's pregnancy I wasn't able to do that as much because I had to parent Hannah and um, was and I was still working. This time around, since I'm not, well I guess I wasn't working for the like second half of William's pregnancy, um, but that was just, I was also trying to learn how to be a stay-at-home mom at the time <laughs> and like take care of a house and stuff and so that was, I still wasn't able to really like focus on the pregnancy. This time around I've been very busy and I, I, I've mainly just spent this time, because I know the effect that it has on the kids when there's a new baby in the house, I've spent this pregnancy just like doting and loving on the kids because, like I said, I know their world is about to get rocked. So, so um, this pregnancy has been different in the fact that I don't have time really to myself because I have two other kids to, to take care of. And um, so I don't have time to like really focus on the baby a lot. The baby is kind of an afterthought. Um, but that's great it can be right now right like it's inside and it's just growing and it's doing its thing and it's healthy and it's just chilling and um, so, so I don't know uh, 
It's also really nice that the timing of the pregnancies, you know, Hannah was two and a half when William was born and William is going to be like two and a half when this baby is born. And so my kids nap, like Hannah took a nap today. So I'm able to have quiet time, uh, nap time, like in the afternoon, William takes really good naps. And Hannah is either old enough to play quietly in her room or she takes a nap. And so that means that every afternoon I can get a nap, which has been amazing. That's been a really good thing about the timing of the pregnancies is that um, I'm pregnant when the kids are still young enough to be napping. That was key. <laughs> that was key to making it through the day. So that's been really nice. How do you think William will react to the new baby? William is a very loud kid, so I think he's going to wake the baby a lot. <laughs> um, he also is like very like, hand we call him William the Destructor. He's just like kind of like rough and tumble and fast and um, laughs a lot. And he he's very just like wild and joyous and he's... I'm a crazy little boy. So um, I think that he is going to be very confused about this baby. Even though we've been talking about him, he's going to be a little weirded out, I think. Uh, a little standoffish. Not really know what to think. But Hannah's going to make up for that and the fact that she is such a little mother hen right now and she's so doting and she just can't wait for the baby. She's so excited. So um, I think hopefully <laughs> maybe William will catch some of Hannah's, you know, like... In infectious joy and be excited about it but um i think he's going to be a little hesitant and and confused i think oh and also whenever william hears a baby crying he gets very concerned he's like baby crying baby crying baby crying <laughs> like he wants everyone he's like alert <laughs> there is a baby crying somewhere and um so i have a feeling i'm going to hear that a lot baby crying baby crying he's gonna be my little baby monitor uh, is there anything that you have done to prepare William for being a big brother? We've talked about it a lot. Tried to potty train him. Gave him a big boy bed. <laughs> like, I, would, I don't know. Um, uh, do you plan on fostering? I already answered that. Has fostering helped calm your nerves about the transition from two to three? Yes, it has. I know that the newborn phase is going to be tough because I haven't obviously had a newborn with Hannah and William. But um, just the idea of because we had baby John... I know what it's like to go out with three kids and like have to do like, you know, preschool drop off and bring, you know, William and a baby and and I understand I can like visualize the logistics of going out by myself with three kids. So that part is not intimidating. Um, breastfeeding with two older kids is a little intimidating just because they bicker a lot. Hannah and William bicker. <laughs> and so if I'm not in the same room, it's going to be hard to like mediate that, right? That's the only thing that I'm like nervous about. I think the first couple months is going to be a transition for everybody and then once we get into a groove, like I'm not concerned. Knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> what do you drive? I drive a 2008 Toyota Sienna minivan. I really like it. I do like my van. We've been driving my husband's car. Um, just like because we can. It's like the last time that all four of us are going to fit in my husband's car type of thing. Like the whole family can fit in the car. So we have the car seats in there for some, for some reason. I don't know. Um, and it's so like cramped and compact and the kids like have a hard time like crawling into their car seats and I'm like, oh god, I just missed my minivan. Like I want to like spread out and have like my stroller in the back. <laughs> I love my van. I am full on soccer mom and I'm okay with it. Um, do you have any pregnancy updates filmed, but you haven't had a chance to edit and upload them? I have like a couple, but really they're, there was like nothing going on. So they're like the lamest vlogs ever. So I just never put them up. Have you had any morning sickness? No. What are you most excited about and scared of when it comes to being the mom of three kiddos? <sighs> I'm the most concerned when my husband goes back to work. And Hannah is like um, in school and it's just like me and the baby and William. Like a, uh, William and I are great like one on one because I can like play with them and stuff. But if I'm distracted with a newborn, like I don't know. How, William's never really like played by himself, right? Like he doesn't, he always has me to like play with him. So um, kind of concerned about how that's going to work and hopefully he grows like and matures leaps and bounds like in the next six months. I think um, between like you know two and a half and three is huge growth de developmentally and stuff so it'll be interesting to see how he changes. 
when the baby comes. Um, and what I'm most looking forward to, I, don't, I guess just like seeing how how the family feels once he's here. I know that after William was here, it was like, we were so content and happy and it just felt so like good. Um, but we still knew we wanted to have more. And so I'm interested to see like when this baby comes, if it feels like good and content and happy and I think that we're done. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing how the family feels. And like first Christmases and stuff like that. Oh, vlogging with a fan is not fun. <laughs> Okay, are you gonna cloth diaper this baby? Yes, I have all the newborn diapers prepped and ready to go. William is still kind of in cloth diapers probably 75% of the time. Um, so yes, I still definitely do cloth diaper and I plan to cloth diaper him. I probably will use disposables for the first like week or two just because I want to take it easy on myself where we're gonna have we're gonna have family visiting. I'm gonna be recovering from labor and delivery and um, you know, I don't necessarily want to be doing cloth diaper laundry all the time. So We'll probably disposable for just like the first couple days and then move over to cloth diapers. Especially once the, the umbilical cord falls off. Then it's like super easy to cloth diaper. How are you preparing, organizing uh, you and your family for the birth and postpartum period? I have been making baby stations and I need to share them because they're so cool and I'm really excited about them. And I need to vlog. I need to vlog more. Carla. Ah. How are you feeling and how have you been feeling? Um, I feel like I've been a little whiny the past couple weeks because Oregon is having a heat wave. And um, so I'm like cliche pregnant lady, like popsicle, frozen drinks, elevated feet, like, <laughs> and, and with like my swollen, like my cankles, I just feel like, like a beached whale some days. <laughs> like honestly, like it's, it is not pretty. Um, but overall I feel really good about this pregnancy. So it's... It has been really easy. It's just the heat the past couple weeks that has been annoying. Okay, would you do a tour of the kids' rooms? Um, yeah, I'm fine with doing a tour of the kids' rooms, and that can definitely be like on the to vlog list coming up here soon. That's fine. Um, someone wants a house tour. I don't really feel comfortable with house tours. I feel like that's a little too like come and rob my house. I don't know. Um, or a clothing vid. I, yeah, I really like closet organization videos, so I will definitely do that one. That's cool. Do you ever feel guilty about adding on another baby? Like having the appropriate time with each child? With each child. She's trying for baby number two and she's having guilt. Um, this time around, I don't feel guilty <laughs> adding on. I did feel guilty when we were like expecting William because again, I didn't know like how can you possibly love two children this, the same amount? Um, how can I love another child as much as I love Hannah? But like I said, it just works out. And um, so I think, I don't necessarily just look at like these first couple of years, you know, like when he's a baby and you know, kind of the world revolves around him because he's so needy, like a newborn. But I look forward to like years and years and years from now when Hannah and William don't just have each other, but they have like another little brother and it's um, a bigger family for them. And I think that that's, I think that that's a gift. I, you know, I think that that's a wonderful thing to have like siblings and a big family and um, all that love. So in that respect, I don't feel guilty because these early years are just, they're so fleeting and they go by so quickly that really they're just a blip. And by giving them another sibling, I think that that's awesome. Like that's gonna impact them their entire life having, you know, more siblings to love and, and then nieces and nephews and, you know. So no, I don't feel guilty, but I did when I was expecting my second because I just didn't know how it all worked out. Now that I know, I don't feel guilty. I take comfort in that? I don't know. <laughs> um, did you experience implantation bleeding with this new baby? I might have. I have no idea because I didn't realize I was pregnant until I was like nine weeks along. So um, I don't even remember. We were fostering. We had baby John with us and so I didn't even know. Like when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, Ike, last period I remember, I could be like 24 weeks along. I have no clue how far along I am. So I wasn't really paying any attention. I'm not helpful. Sorry about that. How do you physically cope picking up William, changing him, etc.? Um, 
I've kind of asked myself the same question because he's a heavy kid and I still pick him up and like put him <laughs> on a change table and like carry him around and stuff and um, thankfully he's getting very independent and he wants to like I want to walk you know he has to can I walk and so I don't have to carry him around much which is good and then uh, we go out a lot as a family and so if if William does need to be picked up usually my husband does it and then I hold Hannah's hand or something so that's kind of I don't know how I've been coping are you buying anything for this baby? Maybe to replace things that are worn out or just a few personalized items just for this little boy? Um, we didn't really buy much. I bought a, uh, I bought a Mama Roo. Because <laughs> I told my husband, I was like, if I have another baby, I really, like, I covet this swing. I really want it. And our swing died when William was like two months old. And so we needed a new swing anyways. And so when we found out um, I was pregnant, that was like my Mother's Day gift a few months later. I, was, I told him, I was like, I really want this swing. And he's like, you want it for Mother's Day? And I said, yes. So we bought him that. We bought him like a coming home outfit. And I bought him like some receiving blankets and stuff but for the most part no I haven't really bought them much and it's been kind of nice honestly it really has um I bought him some new diapers a couple new more like newborn diapers and you know everything else we just used two years ago so it's still like in fashion and um reasonably good shape and so I just pulled a lot out of storage and we're kind of good to go which is super nice really um, is the transition to two babies harder than it is to three babies for those considering baby number three? I don't know. I guess I can tell you in a couple of months. Um, but I can tell you I am not nearly as nervous. I'm not. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not like stressed out about it. I'm not. It's, I guess the third time around you feel like you're a pro almost, right? Like you kind of know what to expect and um, you know what you have control over and what you don't. and. I'm just kind of bracing myself for impact. I know I'm going to be tired and I know I'm going to be like to have a baby stuck to my boob for like the next three months and um, you just have to, you have to love it because what's, what's the other option, right? So I'm just excited for it. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Okay, now I'm going to look over on uh, Facebook and try to answer some of those questions, see if any of those are ones that have not been asked yet. Okay, there are 34 questions on Facebook, so hopefully some of these are <laughs> repeats, otherwise this video is going to be so long. Ooh, this is a good one. Looking back through your whole fertility journey, what would you tell your TTC self if you could give advice? <sighs> That's a good question. I think that it is super easy <laughs> to just lose faith, really, and um, not see or understand how it could ever possibly work out and how you could ever look back and be okay with it. And the weird thing is, is that I look back and I am okay with it. Um, sometimes people, long, long time ago, people used to ask me like, do you ever like just question why did it take like three IUIs to, to have Hannah? Like why did it take, oh, what was it, like nine medicated cycles or whatever? It was horrible. Um, and I think it's really easy to say, yeah, like that's ridiculous that it took that much. But I focus on the fact that Hannah was made from that specific sperm and that specific egg. And if it worked out any other way, I would have a different baby. And I'm sure the baby would be great, but the baby would not be Hannah. And so you, you can't, I can't like be mad about it because I got this amazing daughter that I wouldn't give up for the world. So, um, and with <laughs> William's God, William's conception coming, you know, we were told we were gonna have to do IVF and we were like, how are we ever gonna afford IVF? And we had this two week vacation planned. And so we were like, we just need a break. Like we gotta, we gotta figure out how we're ever going to swing being able to afford IVF. And uh, we get home from vacation and we find out we just naturally <laughs> conceived. Like it was mind blowing. And it, it did an amazing thing for like, my faith. Um, and so I really did like, just an amazing thing for my, like, just my faith. And, um, so with this, <laughs> with this baby being com conceived completely, you know, naturally and in the background, we weren't even paying attention. We weren't trying. And, um, and the timing of it, if you looked, <laughs> we, 
we found out that baby John was going to leave. And from the day that I got that phone call, two weeks later, I ovulated and conceived. And um, it's, an, it's amazing how the timing all worked out. And it's kind of beautiful in that regard of like, I realized I was going to lose a baby, but I actually ended up gaining a baby. And it was beautiful and weird and imperfect and I don't know, just kind of magical. And then we found out we were... <laughs> We found out we were pregnant like nine days, nine, I don't know, uh, no, two weeks. We found out we were pregnant two weeks after we said yes to a placement of like two school-aged boys. We were incredibly overwhelmed and uh, it just worked, it just worked out wonderfully. And um, so I would tell myself to just have faith that I promise you it is not going to work out the way that you plan. Um, but it's going to work out perfectly. I don't know. For me, that's been true. Hopefully that is true for you too. Okay. Um, are you nervous to go to three kids? I remember William had awful reflux and it took it so rough. Does William seem to have any idea of what's going on and what's happening soon? William has no clue. We asked the baby, like, we asked him, what do you want to name the baby? And he's like, rawr! Like, he just, like, doesn't know. And for a long time, when I would be like, ooh, the baby's kicking, he would look at my tummy and be like, mm-hmm, sure it is. Sure there's a baby in there. Um, <laughs> but I think he kind of knows, but he doesn't. He has no clue what's happening. His, his world is going to be turned upside down and totally rocked. Do you feel, since this is your third less actively engaged in this pregnancy because you're just like so busy yes like uh, a little of the excitement is gone because like you know this is the third time and because this baby has been so easy it hasn't demanded a lot of attention whereas William and Hannah demand attention 24 7 so um yeah the pregnancy has just kind of been going on in the background which is a beautiful gift really <laughs> It's, it's been a gift. Um, but it has been a little different. Have you decided on a nursery theme? No. Are the boys going to share a room? Kind of. They share a dresser right now. The baby is going to room share for like six months. So usually that's kind of how it works out. Um, but eventually he will be in this room, William's room. Okay. And the last question, a lot of these are repeats over here. Foster care, cloth diapering, baby number three, that kind of thing. Uh, the last one though is, uh, I know since you were TTCing from the beginning, you obviously didn't use birth control. How do you feel about birth control? And do you think you will start using it after this baby? I did use birth control um, starting at probably like three months, four months postpartum. And, um, and I did it up until like a year just because I really didn't want babies super close together. But after that, I didn't really worry about it. And, um, didn't really pay much attention to it, and obviously I conceived naturally. <laughs> so um, after this baby, we're definitely going to think about birth control because the timing of it is something that we want to be very conscientious of. So um, I'll be looking at my options. Since I have a clotting disorder, I have to be careful which birth control options I use, but um, there are options available. So I probably will be, but it'll probably be a pill form, not like an IUD or Depro or anything like that. Depo. Okay, so I think I answered all the questions. Thank you so much for those of you that asked them on Instagram and Facebook. If I missed yours, I really do apologize. I lost my place sometimes and was scrolling and trying to read through them quickly. Um, also, I know that there was a lot of duplicates, but I think I touched on all the topics. If you have a specific question that you want to know, feel free to leave it down below and I will try to answer it in an upcoming vlog. And um, ultimately, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm really excited. And it's so close. <laughs> my duty is so close now. It is less than three weeks away. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to film the, um, the labor and delivery birth plan kind of video. Um, I might do it tonight if I can clear off some space in this memory card. And maybe I should do a quick little belly shot. You want to see the belly shot? See if I can arrange that in William's room real quick. Um, I'm not wearing a maternity shirt. I'm wearing like a pre-pregnancy shirt, but it's so hot and this is like really lightweight. So, <laughs> so it's very comfortable. Um, so no judgment, but let me stand up and see if I can give you a view of 37 weeks in all of its glory. I will skip the kinkles though. I'll save you that. You don't have to see my kinkles. Um, they're not that bad, but it's the first time I've ever had them. I'm a little sensitive. <laughs> so let me stand up and show you. Okay, so that is 37 weeks. Okay, 
again so if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comment below and um, I will talk to you later I know I'm not super active on YouTube right now, but if you do want to like interact and kind of see what's going on in my life, Instagram is the best place by far, uh, followed by Facebook, and I'm also on Twitter. If you're not on Instagram, I usually share a lot of the pictures, the links to them at least, on Twitter, so that might be like a way for you to see the pictures, um, but hopefully one of those platforms works for you. Okay? All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>